I look at them like hopefully they're inspiring the person. I think of these as more it's like when the, when the guy gets home from his concert and he wants to just unwind, he's going to pick up one of these and then also uh, create with them and actually record with them, you know, go into the studio with them. Using non-traditional woods, you're going to get an instrument that is uh, an individual and uh, every instrument is going to have its own tonal qualities. One can have more sustain, one can have a shorter sustain, some will be more punchy, some will be more muted. You can have a brightness or more of a, a, um, a darker sound and they all musically give you a mood or an attitude which then can direct you or almost guide you, well almost sort of lead you in a certain way musically. And you hit a certain note and all of a sudden that note has got different qualities that you didn't hear on any of your other instruments which then all of a sudden turns into a phrase that you want to do and next thing you know you got a new song. right? Um, so, I mean, that's always interesting when you play a, a new instrument. It was in the mid-90s when I first came across some uh, part suppliers catalogs and they were they had kits in those as well. So then I was looking at the possibility of buying one of these kits. So a kit would have been a few hundred dollars, maybe four hundred dollars, something like that, but then there's all the tools and then you got to buy all that stuff. And so I was sort of rolling that around and also I hadn't had a uh, high-end guitar at that point so I'm talking something like a Martin or a Gibson or something along those lines. And uh, by 98, I bought my first uh, Gibson CL35, so that was a, around a $2,000 guitar. And then I guess it was uh, still a few years went by. And then finally, uh, I kind of decided, no, I do want to build guitars. And then when I decided that, I, uh, I found this place to rent, so got that, and I bought two kits. So 2001, fall of 2001. I literally, I got a phone call from the guys at this work and store place down here in Burlington and said, do you want this space? Yes, I'll take it. And uh, so I got the space and then I uh, bought the two kits. And so I started laminating up some necks for some electric guitars. I made my first couple of workbenches, went out and bought some of my first tools like the jointer and a bandsaw, which I hadn't used in something like 20 years. And uh, just started dabbling at it and going from there. So basically, this is you know where I carve the necks. So basically, while this is clamped down, you know I take my files and I would be my files and rasps and the different cutting tools and, and shape that neck, being very careful also not to hit the horns. Anyways, so yeah, that's the next lion, lion two, and this is this guitar is really unusual. It's got uh, only the switches for the pickups, no volume, no tone, because this guy plays with a whole bank of uh, pedals on the floor. And, uh, and also, you wanted a really clean look, so there's nothing on the top of the fretboard. But I put these big position marks down the side here. So um, I actually haven't seen that anywhere. But I think, you know, they're pretty cool. So this is the third time I've done this now. And then as far as the jack plate, he actually wanted it in the back. So now this shape still has to be refined. I've just glued this together and unclamped it actually yesterday. So now I have to trim off the edge here so that it drops into this opening here. And actually, I'm going to be carving a little dish into here so that the jack actually plugs into the back here. And then that's in here, so it'll be completely clean on the top. So yeah, this is a nice guitar. And you can see how, by how I'm moving it, it's pretty light too, right? I mean, in my formative years, you know, I worked in uh, landscaping, but I also, instead of I mean, there's different crews in landscaping. So you have uh, the people who are laying the sod and planting the trees and the flowers. But prior to that, there has to be the guys who are actually building the walkways or the wooden decks or any of that kind of stuff. So I was on the, what's called a hard landscaping crew. 
So I would be in there with a crew of guys and we would do, uh, you know, timber reinforcement walls. And like, you know, let's say you got a walkway or no, and a wall beside it that's all made out of timber. Or I built, um, you know, bridges across little creeks in, the, in park systems. And uh, there was one summer, there was three of us, we built this massive amphitheater all out of six by eight pressure treated lumber. So, you know, we're cutting it with a chainsaw, cutting the wood with a chainsaw and nailing it all together with like 12 pound sledgehammers and 14 inch spikes. And uh, so that's like crude woodworking. Um, at the same time, I was working at a part-time job. Uh, so the end of high school and then when I was laid off from the landscaping, I was working in a place making actual working spinning wheels. And so that was now working with the kind of same kinds of tools that furniture makers would be doing. So I was working with band saws and drill presses and jointers and all that kind of stuff. Also concurrently, uh, I guess starting when I was about, I don't know, 12, maybe 11, I built uh, wooden model airplanes. So I started building balsa wood model airplanes. So unlike today where you just get a plastic or styrofoam airplane and you snap it together and in five minutes you're in the air, Back then, if you wanted to have a flying model airplane, I mean, you would spend a month or two first building the whole airplane out of balsa wood. And so that gets you doing really detailed work. Now, granted, balsa, work, balsa is really easy to work with, but you know, you're, you're doing all that fine work and also sanding all the sharp corners away. And uh, so that's one of the things, for instance, that comes out in my guitars. You know, when, I, when you look inside, I mean, they're absolutely clean simply because I'm you know, I'm sanding it right down, which is something I guess I got from my building model airplane days. A lot of guys, they would just have their chisel marks and they would be done with the chisel mark, right? Um, so I was doing various things around woodworking. Now, when I started as a pilot, then, you know, I didn't have access to that. And I, you know, basically went for 20 years not really doing a lot of word work other than building my own deck when I was, you know, our first house in Burlington. I built a deck and a couple of sheds there. Um, so then it was when I started with the guitars and changing gears and uh, getting these woodworking tools again and then I did a couple of test projects almost like I remember making a fancy candle holder and a few different things prior to doing this and then also as far as the woodworking skill I mean it's you know you, you read about something or maybe you watch a YouTube video and there's also net or news groups now so nowadays basically if you can read you can do anything Right? So I'd find out the information, get some sample pieces of wood, try it. So literally before I bent my first sides, I must have bent a dozen pieces of scrap lumber just to test everything, right? So I mean, there are courses now that you can take as well, but I didn't do any of those. I, I just, it's, it's all self-taught. Here's a nice one. This is a Black Locust acoustic guitar. It's a double O size. I'm just about ready to glue the neck in place. So right now I'm just holding it. So that is the dovetail joint. And let me just, you see the uh, headstock? Mm -hmm. So where do you do, how, how did, like you do that inlay yourself? Right? Yeah. So that's like a whole other skill in and of so, itself. So, you know, that's, that's another aspect of this. So this guitar, um, these are all cut with a, uh, with a fret saw. So basically my saw blade has 60 teeth per inch. You can't even see those teeth. You have to feel it like sandpaper to see which way they're pointed when you set up the guitar. I mean, when you set up the, the blade. So then you create the pattern, uh, maybe on a sheet of paper, cut it out, glue it to the piece of, uh, of um, shell or wood that you're using, cut it all out, transfer the pattern onto the, onto the guitar, Cut that all out with a Dremel to make the pocket, put it all in, um, scrape it or sand it flat, then etch it and get the pattern. Over here on this guitar, I've got a little dog face inlaid into it. Right? Over here, check out the inlay on this one, on the, on the poster. 